In the United Kingdom, pies are king. Not just for the cherries and the apples that you Yanks are used to. You have your chicken, your steak and kidney, your pork pie. And in one tiny fishing town, you have this. A pie with, well, wait, is, it, is that a fish head? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Trust me, you're going to love it. In this tiny fishing village, there's a pub. And in that pub, they make stargazy pie. It's a tradition that legend has it has been happening here for hundreds of years. Which begs the question, why? The stargazy pie is a pie which celebrates Tom Bocox going out and catching seven different kinds of fish on the 23rd of December. You see, according to the legend, it had been a stormy winter. This meant no boat managed to go out and fish. So people were starving. But a local fisherman, Tom Bocox, he wasn't going to let his people die. I'm going. He went out through the gate, yes, that gate, and braved the storm. And? And caught the different kinds of fish and brought it back. He made the pie. And that brings us to today. Tracy, take it away. You get six different white fish, bake that in the oven with some herbs and some lemon zest, put a layer of grated eggs, a nice mashed potato with loads of cream in, and then you put a pastry lid, put pilchards, cut them, and then you put so that the heads are coming out of the pie and the tails are coming out of the pie. You assemble all the stars around the pie. On the 23rd of December, we give it away free to thousands of people that come to the village to celebrate Tom Bocock's night. So to Tom Bocox, what a legend. Cheers, Tom. So, should we taste it? Mm, mm, that is good. Delicious. That really is quite delicious. It's good. Really good. The fish is lovely. It's most interesting. It's, it's much milder than I thought. Mm, fish bone. Welcome to Rochester, New York, the home of Kodak Eastman, situated on Lake Ontario, and creator of the finest delicacy in all the land. Hey, can I have a plate with all the garbage on it, please? That, my friends, is the garbage plate, and let me tell you, it is glorious. My name is Alex Tahoe. My grandfather invented the original garbage plate called Hots and Potatoes, and my father perfected the real garbage plate. At this point, you're probably wondering what this so-called garbage plate is. And I'll tell you, a garbage plate is... Let me handle this. Garbage plate starts with your choice of sides from home fries, french fries, macaroni salad, or beans. Then you pick your meat. Hot dogs, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, whatever's on the menu. Then you add your toppings from mustard, onions, and hot sauce. Ketchup and Red Hot is optional. Then add two pieces of Italian bread and butter, and you're all set to go. Over the years, we've had a lot of different kind of garbage plates. We actually had our sardine plate years ago. I don't think you can get much crazier than sardines. The best part of this business is, of course, the customers. Without them, we'd be nothing. The place was established to give people a lot of food at a reasonable price. For years, people have come in here hungry that didn't have any money. My father always fed them. That's really sweet, Alex, but let's get back to the garbage because I'm really wondering how many calories are in a plate. I really don't know. Some people have said 3,000. I don't think it's that high, but I guess I'd have to be a nutritionist to tell you. But I will say this is the only place you can get a garbage plate. Any other plate in Rochester is a copycat. We trademarked it, so now it's world famous. Trademarking garbage? Genius. もみじの天ぷらというのは伝統的なお菓子です。1300年昔に遡りますけれども、お菓子になってるのは身の中でございます。名前は久久に節子と申します。私はこのもみじの天ぷらを作りかけて、ま、突いで参りまして50年になります。もみじの天ぷらというのは食べられるもみじっていうのは種類がありまして赤い葉は全部ダメです黄色くてというのは葉脈が柔らかいですで塩漬けにしてほどしても胃も色も変わらないですまずはこの収穫時は
こういうふうな葉っぱそれを一年中塩漬けにしておきまして軸を切ってで揚げる時には塩を抜いてで衣を作ってそれで揚げるっていうのがもみじの天ぷらなんですけれど。あのもみじの天ぷらって時々生で食べさせてとおっしゃるけど全然味わいたしませんもみじの天ぷらのお味っていうのはお砂糖が入ってますから甘くなってます手作りでしょ1枚ずつなんですよこうちょっとかけたらきれいに形を整えてあげるいうのがそれがまた揃える時の手間なんですようちでまあ80年になりますけどももみじの天ぷら作りね楽しいっていうかこだわりをうちは持ってしてます。海地の天ぷらを本当に全く知らないで来られるお客さんもたくさんいらっしゃいます。えー、お客様が来られて美味しいって言ってもらう一声がすごい嬉しくて。Three words you should never ask. What's in Haggis. Lamb's liver, lamb hearts, lamb langs. Well, oh, too late、yeah. now. Let's do the story. Onion, salt and pepper. This is Fraser McGregor. He's a haggis maker. I'm a champion haggis maker. Ah, he's a champion haggis maker here in Dingwall, Scotland, at Cockburn, George and Son. And they don't hide their title. We're the first champion haggis makers in Scotland. We won the title in 1976. Chances are you've never heard of haggis, or at least you've never tried haggis. And that's because it's a very, very Scottish dish. Haggis has been around for centuries in Scotland.、Um, it was evolved hundreds and hundreds of years ago to use up all the pieces of an animal, mainly lamb, as in the lungs, the liver, the heart, that you wouldn't normally use in everyday cooking. Traditionally, haggis is encased in the sheep's stomach. A、uh, fun fact these days, stomachs are not really used anymore. They're actually being made in non edible casings, which are easier to cook with and they don't have a,、uh, let's just say, distinctive odor. Making haggis is no easy feat. To make haggis from the start, from the raw ingredients, it takes roughly 18 to 20 hours. First, we cook the haggis ingredients overnight, then, we sort the meats out, we mince it all together with the dry ingredients, and then after that, it goes into the filling machine. It is then put into the boilers for the last and final cooking. And it's served any number of ways. Traditionally, like this, with potatoes and turnips. But today, chefs, they're getting more creative. The flavor of haggis is quite unique. It tastes savory, very rich. You can't eat too much of it, it's quite heavy as well. Honestly, we tried the haggis and it's really good here. Anyway, this secret recipe, Fraser didn't actually make himself. The original、uh, recipe was、uh, introduced into the shop by Jockey McCallum. I worked with Jockey for many, many years.、Uh, I've now dabbled his、uh, number of years in the shop, so I think I can call it my recipe now. To keep this、uh, tradition going is、uh, quite hard in this day and age with the, the cost of everything, but、uh, we've tried our best, and obviously, we're going to have to keep it going and pass it on to the next generation. Can we see the recipe? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can buy the shop, and then I can show you. Mississippi, and everywhere you go, tamales. Those magical little snacks of corn flour and meat packed into a corn husk. Tamales, tamales, tamales. So if you've ever wondered what Mississippi tastes like, it tastes like me, the tamale. My journey starts almost a hundred years ago. It's 1930. And Mexican migrants are trickling into Mississippi. They bring along a taste of home, their version of the sandwich. Me, the tamale. My great grandfather came here from Mexico City, jumped the trains, ended up in Mississippi. He decided to make his family's homemade, hand rolled hot tamales. And in 1939, opened up this place and started selling tamales. You have to understand, this is a family thing. I'm the fourth generation. These same generational people who've been coming to the Big Apple Inn for the last 78 years are also generational. 
when they eat a tamale, they always have a story. My daddy used to bring me here. His daddy had the same kind of story. His daddy had the same kind of story. Tamales caught on here, and it became a, a, a staple in, in the city. So there I am, winning over the Mississippi natives. And as I make my way up into the Delta, my location may change, but little did I know that the tradition of family most certainly would not. Just like Gino and his grandfather at the Big Apple Inn, I bring the Scott family together, a family who has gone on to be known as the first family of tamales in Mississippi. In the early 50s, my father bought the recipe from a Mexican guy. My mother and father taught me. My sisters and my niece, all of us together, we're making hot tamales. we just one big hot tamale family. Any business that's family oriented, I think it'll last longer. Much like the Scott family, the Doe family is made up of a long line of tamale makers. Doe's Eat Place is a landmark restaurant that helped propel me to become the backbone of Mississippi cuisine I've become today. My daddy started this restaurant in 1941 with my mother. We've been here 76 years. Mama had a sister that was living here, and Daddy had a couple, two or three sisters that were living here, so they all came and rolled tamales. You know, a lot of people ask, ask us, you know, how did tamales get prevalent in the Delta? Uh, it's been family. You know, the family's been here all the time. As tamales made their way from Mexican culture to African-American communities and on to Mississippi's white population, there's one thing that remained a constant, family, the most Southern concept of all. 